everybody. Welcome to the Colorado Knits podcast, video cast, whatever it might be. My name is Carrie, otherwise known as Colorado Knits, coming to you on Monday, February 6, 2023. It's been a little bit since I last recorded. I did record about a week and a half ago and it was just awful, so I just deleted it. Um, hopefully today works a little bit better. We'll see. I actually recorded twice. <laughs> Uh, a week and a half ago and deleted both of them. So today is Monday, February 6th, if I haven't said that. Um, if you're new here, welcome. This is where I talk about my crafting adventures from my super messy crafting room. And um, my dogs usually come to pay a little visit. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. I hope everything's going well for you. I hope you're having a good February and you've survived some of these cold snaps that we have been having. Um, Let's see, if you wanna get a hold of me, my website, which I sort of sometimes update, is coloradonits.net. My email is hello at coloradonits.net, and you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry at Colorado Knits. Um, with that, I'm gonna dig right in because I've got some work to do today. Um, life and stuff tends to get in the way, so let's just go into finished objects. Um, first finished object, which I really shouldn't have in my possession. Um, I have my box stitch baby blanket, the Prism baby blanket by the Make and Do Crew. I made this using Lion Brand Feels Like Butter um, in charcoal as well as Ferris Wheel in Wild Violets. Uh, this is a free pattern you can get from Make and Do Crew or you can pay for the PDF. Very simple, um, very meditative as crochet often is. Um, I really have got to get this in the mail this week because baby is due next week. Um, and it's been done for a little while. I just washed it and it smells lovely, though it has some fragrance to it. So I'm sure that Elizabeth will wash it again in like Baby Dove or whatever, uh, Baby Ivory. So I finished that. Um, other thing I finished is the Mini Me MCAL by Cozy Up Knits. Uh, you'll see maybe a couple of stitch markers in here because while I finished blocked, and sewed in all my ends, I found two spots where I dropped stitches that I need to weave in. Um, I was calling this my don't shoot me in the face Dick Cheney um, shawl or my hunting shawl. Um, coincidentally, the person that Dick Cheney shot in the face while hunting and then proceeded to blame because he stepped into his line of fire, he died today. So um, rest in peace, he was 95. So he lived a good life other than getting shot in the face by Dick Cheney. Um, so this is my I'm going hunting shawl. Um, I use my least favorite colors, closest, what I thought would be smaller swaths, because they're going to be right here. Um, they're pretty big, but when I wrap it all up, it, it's okay. Uh, this was made using, I know you're shocked, Always Be Kind Yarn in her 2022 advent. I used 10 minis. It came with 24, so um, I have several mini left in that. So here we go. Um, you'll see that it is short row wedges with lots of different texture. Um, and I added in the pink rows at the bottom. Um, I made those up, they're just stockinette. Um, I added in those rows so I could highlight those colors. Um, but when I put it on, I guess I should put it on the way I might. Oh, this is very big. Um, because you know me, I love a wearable blanket. You can see the orange, but you can also see that the other colors are highlighted and it is super big, super squishy, and super lovely. Um, it is not MCN, it's like a 80-20 and it's still super soft and lovely. So that's finished object number two. It has already been worn a little bit. Um, it's funny, everybody says it's bright and cheery and I say because I am not, and if you know me IRL, I am a snark. So. And my third finished object I am wearing. This is my modified turtle dove by Espas Tree Coats free pattern. It is knit using Knit Picks Wonder Fluff in the Atlantic Heather colorway. Um, I started by modifying the neck because it has a big turtleneck that you can fold over. So I just made a small turtleneck. It's even a little big for me. Um, long, it's a little long for me. Um, and then it's got raglan increases and I was dumb and decided I knew better than the designers and decided to decrease my sleeves. It doesn't have sleeve decreases. It's a free pattern, so I'm not giving away anything. 
Um, so I decreased my sleeves and they are very form fitting now. I don't mind so much because the whole, the look, I think this piece came together very well, um, but I would do it differently next time. Um, and the raglan increases were kind of funky how she wrote them, um, but they work. I'm just used to a more traditional raglan. So, um, but I've knitted up in a couple of weeks. Um, let's see. Here it is. You can see it is, I will back up. You can see what a mess my craft room is. It is cropped. There's a dog that I just stepped on. It is slightly cropped. It's not really cropped because I'm wearing high-waisted jeans that come here. If I were to wear the jeans I used to love when I was skinny, those would come to here. Um, I've got a tank top on under it and it's slightly cropped and it's got the split hem. Um, I totally, totally screwed up the pattern. Like it said knit a certain length if you're just gonna do a rolled hem. I knit that length and then was like, oh, that's not for the split hem. But I like how it came out. It is super comfortable. Again, um, it is alpaca merino nylon. Um, it's a teensy bit itchy, but I haven't washed it yet. Um, but I also have a super sensitive neck. My neck is just ridiculously sensitive, but I also don't want to ever take it off because it is super soft. This yarn is Knit Picks Wonder Fluff. Um, I have, this is obviously not the same color. I will be making another sweater in this. And I also already made, this is called the Night Owl that I've made in the same yarn. I'm going to make another Night Owl, um, which is very boxy, loose sweatshirty fabric. Um, I will be making another Night Owl. Um, just notice that the back, that this is super funky how I made it. There's no, um, I don't think there's any short rows in the back, but here's the back because there's short rows up top in the back, but then my back is shorter than my front here. So maybe I wasn't paying attention or maybe I just didn't block it when I washed it, which is probably more likely. Um, so I'll be making another one of those. I actually, I don't think you do any short rows. So I think it was just how I blocked it. So those are my finished objects. It's finished at February. So I'm really trying to get stuff off my needles. Also, because when we get to what I want to knit, I got a lot I want to knit. Um, so, uh, I am hoping to put links to all of those on my website eventually. Um, the Espastri Co. I could not find Turtle Dove 1 on their website. Turtle Dove 2 is available on their website. Um, so that is a Ravelry pattern, but it's a free pattern. So if you can't access Ravelry, I'm happy to send it to you because it's free. Um, the Mini Me MCAL is available on Payhip and Ravelry. And the Box Stitch Baby Blanket is a free pattern from Make and Do Crew on their website. So you never have to do Ravelry if you don't. Um, so let's get on to finish in February. I did notes two weeks ago, so I'm looking down a lot. I apologize. Um, I know you want to see my bright sunny face on a Monday morning. Um, so finish it February, things I am working on. I'm sorry, I have allergies and so I have a little bit of a runny nose. Um, I am working on, these are my, I call them my CU buff socks. They are from my, these are, I were, that, that, that word scary. Um, I cast these on specifically for pigskin party back in, I'll say October. I think I cast them on October 1st. Um, these were my, like, my dogs go outside and I need to sit downstairs by our back door while they're outside. Um, so these were my knitting project there. And then my football team, the University of Colorado Buffaloes, was horrible this year. So I had no desire to finish these socks. So they went in timeout. And then my sock machine arrived and Christmas socks started getting knit and my sock machine. So yeah, I was kind of busy with that. So these languished for quite some time. Then we hired Deion Sanders and had one of the top recruiting classes in the country. If you like college football, that's a good thing. Um, actually, if you don't like college football, I'm explaining that's a good thing. If you like college football, you know it's a good thing. So then I'm like, well, I have to finish these. Um, also, Pigskin Party wraps up next week, this week, so I have to finish them. So I finished the first one, and this is using Artistic Yarn by Abby in Steampunk. She, in her monthly yarn club, sends you a little mini that coordinates. Um, it's very bright gold. Um, my school colors are, everybody thinks they're black and gold, but they're silver and gold with black accent, so these work great. Um, and I just knit these. This is a Fish Lips Kiss Heel, and I did a an 18 row folded hem um, 
and I did not do a contrast hem. I usually do a contrast hem, but we were driving out and about, and so I just went for it, um, and it worked. I don't know how straight my hem is, but I don't really care. Um, and then I was able to cast on the second one, and I am getting ready to do the hem on this one. So uh, pigskin party ends on Sunday, the Super Bowl, which is the 12th. So I should have these done. Um, I have... I have two trainings this week, so I should definitely be able to get these done. So again, this is Artistic Yarn by Abby in the steampunk colorway. Um, I am a member of her monthly club. I have paused it for a few months because I need yarn like a hole in the head. Um, but I do love her self-striping so much that I might start it back up. Um, my next thing is the Habitation Throw by Helen Stewart, Curious Handmade. Um, and this is out of Knitvent, I think it was Knitvent 2020, maybe 2019. Um, and I'm just making progress. I am officially halfway through right now. Um, and I am thinking I'm going to add in, this is, I made this, I am making this out of yarn from Jen Study, we, uh, from my swap. And she included five extra little minis in here um, from whomever this dyer is. Um, and so I'm thinking about adding these in, in the middle. I'm still debating and I have until this app, you know, tonight when I sit down to knit this again to decide if I wanna make it just a little bit bigger. I love my habitation throw, it's not very large. Um, it is 24 10 gram skeins. I have one already that sits in my office and it's a great lap blanket. Could it be a little bit bigger? Of course, because you know wearable blankets need. I'm fairly small. I like big things. Um, so I'm working on that. I want to get that off the needles. Um, you know, when I did my last one, I did 10 to 20 grams a day. I should be able to do that, um, especially because it's pretty brainless knitting. Another thing I really want to get off my needles, this has been on for about a year. This is my Sassy Spirit Wrap, and this is done uh, in yarn by the Sheepy Shire. The pattern is from Megan Williams' Just Run Knit of the Stockinette Zombies. And I think, I've, I mean, I know I've shown this before, but it's got this little funky top. So your shawl stays on and you can style it however you'd like. You don't have to put it over your head. You could use this as a loop. You can do any number of things on it. I love it because it's so textury. I don't love doing stripes, but I actually have done the stripes on this and not complained. Um, and it has been, um, it's been a very fun knit. It just got stalled out. I made another one that's similar called Making Connections. And I love doing it so much that I was like, oh, I've got to make another one. And then I stalled out on it. Um, and this is living in my, um, front range bags bag with my little sugar skulls. And I love that bag. Front range bags are on, she's on Etsy. She's fantastic. She also, you can send her fabric and she'll make you a bag. Um, and she has the dimensions and I've got that sitting over here and I need to message her and have her make me a Charlie Brown bag. Um, let's see, what else? Hudson Bay slipper socks. So these will take me about 90 minutes to knit up. I am 99% sure. This is my own pattern based on um, the Turkish bed socks by Church Mouse Yarn and Tees. These are being knit in, um, these are knit in this, there's only one, is knit in Woolies Thick and Quick in the Hudson Bay colorway. If you know me, you know Hudson Bay them them trappers is my favorite i love 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 hudson bay colors the cream with the red green blue and yellow is just the bomb um i made up the pattern i wrote down the pattern i didn't make it up because i based it off of theirs but i changed it um i wrote down the pattern i've made one set for my mom one set for me and now i want another set for me and this has been sitting since the end of December. It will take me 90 minutes to an hour to knit this. I just need to get it off the needles and ideally maybe before the pigskin class, pla pigskin party ends. Um, so maybe I'll do that one of those this, this week, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then my last thing is the arcade shawl. Um, 
This is the Arcade Shawl by Katie Carroll. If you can see that. Um, and it uses two skeins of a solid and I think just one skein of a contrasting color. Um, and I started this during Zombie Knit Apocalypse last year. I bought the yarn. This is, um, it is coming out really purple today, but it's pretty royal blue. This is um, Tits Up from uh, Three Irish Girls. And love Three Irish Girls, even though it's only one girl now. Three Irish Girls yarn. Um, and this is 8515 to a Lorna Dux late. Adorn Lux base. I cannot talk today. I'm glad I know how to give any presentations. And my contrast is, um, I don't know what this colorway is called. I'm trying not to crinkle, but you can see it is actually the same colorway I used for my um, Cape Cod sweater with hot pink from um, Sun Valley Fibers, words, words, words. Um, and it's just this lovely speckle that I just, I can't get enough of these speckles. So that's barely cast on. I mean, I literally, I didn't even show you, that's all that's cast on. <laughs> it's very, very barely cast on. A little garter tab and some, um, yeah. So I um, loved working on this when I started it. But then I just got completely distracted because I had to think and we were at Zombie Knit Apocalypse and um, it's got some mosaic knitting and I didn't want to screw it up. Uh, this is living in my Black Pearl Magic uh, bag, which I got at Zombie Knit Apocalypse last year. Just love it. All the little details. Um, so that's what's in progress. Those are technically in progress. Um, then I have a whole bunch of stuff. I want to get all this off my needles. So I have a lot of stuff I want to knit. Um, I'll start with the simple stuff that I have the yarn for already. Um, I, one of the tops on my list, I want sweaters. I really want sweaters. I apologize for the crinkling. This, um, I want to make a pavement sweater. If you go through any of my history, you know I've made about five pavement sweaters. And I'm down to, I might have two of them left. Maybe only one because of the moths found a moth in here this morning. Not happy. Um, but here, this is called Toxic Oreo. It is from the Lemonade Shop. And I have this um, on her Simple Sock, which is just her 80-20 Superwash. I love this yarn. It is a natural with all sorts of pops of pinks and yellows and blues and orange. Name a color. And then it's got the black speckles in it. This has always been planned to be a pavement sweater and it will be a pavement. And I love, love, love that pattern. That pattern, um, I cannot think of who it is. It isn't Ho He, um, I apologize. I cannot remember it, but it's the pavement sweater. Um, the next thing I wanna knit in addition is the Renunculus. That is by Gosh, words are not coming to me today, um, but she also makes the Paul Cleese sweater, and I love her because she, um, Midori, um, Midori, Midori someone. Gosh, I apologize, everyone. Um, I have to write today, too, and apparently, hopefully words are here and they're just not making it out of my mouth, um, but I'm doing this in Get Knit Faced in Colorado. Um, my friend Michelle, I am doing going to be doing this in her DK in a very specific color called Carrie's Sweater. This is Carrie's Sweater in fingering weight. And you'll say, well, why do you have it in fingering weight if you're doing it in DK? Because I was at my local yarn shop a couple of weeks ago and I wasn't buying anything because I'm not really going to buy new yarn unless I have a project that I really want to do. More on that in a minute. Uh, but I was going to use it, uh, use up what I had. And this one little skein of Carrie's sock in, in fingering was just sitting there. So I texted Michelle and said, I think that's a sign, right? She's like, oh, you need socks and a hat to match your ranunculus. So um, that is what I will be making. Um, I will also be making socks and a hat. Um, and I might cheat on my socks and make shorties on my sock machine. But that's a whole nother thing. Um... Then I also bought, um, as long as we're talking sweaters, I'm looking for the yarn here. I apologize. Huh, 
Maybe I don't have the yarn here. Um, yes, I do. From Mud Punch, I plan to do a sweater, probably a pavement, because that's what I make. Um, Mud Punch for a while, Chantal was, Chantel was doing tonals and tweeds uh, while she reformulated all of her self-striping because her dye purveyor went out of business. And so I got this very simple polar desert. It's called Marble Fingering. It's an 80-20. It's 400 yards in 115 grams, so it's a heavy fingering. Um, and it is just a tweed. It is a natural base with sort of black tweed in it. And it's absolutely soft and lovely and it will make a lovely sweater. And again, probably a pavement. I do know I can knit pavements in about two weeks because all it is is raglan increases, then a tube, and then two socks on the arm, basically. It's all, um, it is almost all stockinette and mindless and lovely. So that's in the works too. Um, another project that I've been wanting to do for some time is the Tahoe shawl by Get Knit Faced in Colorado, Michelle. And she was knitting this, she was writing it when we were at Zombie Knit Apocalypse last year. And I saw it and thought, eh, I don't know if that's what I wanna do. And then when I saw the finished object, I had to have it. And then I saw her at my local yarn shop and said, well, I need the exact colors that you did it in. And those are Agnostic and Love is in the Air. And it is a two skein fingering weight shawl. and It's very pretty. So I want to knit that as well. Um, additionally, my friend Laura from Always Be Kind Yarn sent me two skeins of this. Laura, if you're watching, do you have a third by chance? Um, and this is this like minty neon green. I don't, I don't know how you can have minty neon, but it's not full on neon green. It's a little um, quieter than that. And I would like to make either a summer sorrel or a v-neck, a v-back tee, or just a tee. Um, this is, these are super generous skeins. These are 440 yards. I honestly think I could probably get, um, with two, I could probably get a shirt done without a problem. I need to look into that. Um, but these were her Christmas gift to me, and it's very sweet. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, so those are what I have sort of queued up that I want to get knitting on. I also have the Jimmy Beans Wool La Bien Ami knit along, which is a year long knit along, 20 grams of yarn every month. It just arrived. So I haven't started that yet. Um, so I plan to sort of, and then of course there's socks. Um, so I plan to have socks, a shawl and a sweater on the needles, probably at all times. Um, whether, and then additionally wanting to make some sock tubes with um, Pinky Tuscadero back there. Last night, she and I got in a fight. I tried to, it obviously was not a night to create because I had, um, all I wanted to do was do a tube and nothing wanted to work. And so I'm like, okay, I think the yarn that I'm trying to use, which is some old Lion brand sock yarn, I am guessing that that is too thick to use. Um, on my sock machine because my sock machine is fickle. It likes, it really likes light fingering the most. Um, that's the difference when you buy a Dean and Bean versus when you buy an auto knitter or a um, uh, Earl Bacher. Earl, they both, Earl Bacher and auto knitter have a wider spectrum of yarn you can use. Dean and Bean is for fingering only. Um, so I'm like, okay, well, I'll just wind up a cone of um, a lighter fingering. And so I went through, you can see this mess back here. This is all mothballed yarn that I've been airing out for a month or so. And it's the yarn that isn't my favorite. I like it, but it's not my favorite. So I'm like, I know I have at least a half skein in there. I just want to get my sock machine to work. Haven't used it in a couple weeks. So it was a little grumpy because of that. Um, and when I went to wind my cone, I have two cone winders and neither of them wanted to wind this yarn into a cone. So last night was just not a night to create and I went back to working on my habitation row. It's like, I don't think this is gonna work. When I did, like every stitch dropped on my sock machine. And so for those of you who have one, who have seen my videos, who, or not my videos, but who have seen me doing a ton of sock tubes and having no troubles, it comes and goes. It has nothing to do with your ability. It's just the dry air, I don't know what it was. Um, so that didn't happen. Um, so those are what I have on my needles and in, oh, I forgot one other thing. 
I mentioned I want to do another night owl using Wonder Fluff in this color. This, my husband chose this color. This is called Turquoise Heather. This is Atlantic Heather. I have about two skeins of this left, a little under two skeins. So I'm thinking, I don't know if I can make a hat with the alpaca, if I have to hold something with it um, to make it stretchier. The alpaca does not really stretch that much. Um, yes, it has. this has merino and nylon, but it's mostly alpaca. Um, I think I want to make a hat too, because, oh my gosh, how warm would a hat be? Or at least a headband. Um, so that is, those are all my knitting creations. I have a dog snoring, yawning over here. Um, so I'm going to move on to stuff I got in the mail. And I have mentioned that I'm trying to be much more cognizant and mindful of my yarn purchasing. Um, but I do belong to some clubs and I'm not stopping those clubs for now. Um, one of my favorite clubs is the Simply Socks Yarn Company three month yarn club. They do between two and six a year, I think. They do, they are three months long. Um, so it's a quick dose and you pay for it up front and, it, and it's cheap, um, including shipping. I think I did this one for $110. It might have been $116 including shipping. Um, and you usually get one skein a month. Sometimes it's two skeins a month. Um, and if it's if it's their house yarn, it's usually two skeins a month. Um, and like I said, it's like $30 to $40 a month. It is a one-time purchase. You don't buy it monthly. You have to pay for it up front. This past season, um, I finally, I finally, I got my third set of yarn from them. They have been working on Splash Sock, which is um, their home brand, their store brand. They have been making self-patterning yarns. I'm not going to open this because I did just find the moth in here. Um, I do not want to have to fumigate my yarn again. Um, and they've been making self-patterning yarn. I don't have any of it in here, but I've knit um, three pair of socks out of it, two pair of socks out of it, and I love it. Um, so it is a 75-25, um, and you can see this month's um, are thick stripes, it looks like. I saw them, they showed a sample of this one after it all shipped. Um, not my wheelhouse, but my mom's friend's wheelhouse. This um, this has got some autumnal colors. This has greens and browns, not my wheelhouse, but I know people who like it. And then this is blues and greens and whites and blacks. So that is, uh, there's some brown in there, but um, these make, these are workhorse socks. These are 75-25. I love using um, Simply Socks Yarn Company yarns. They are such, they're, they're a pleasure to knit with. They have fantastic availability of sock yarns for sweaters. They do some DK. You're not going to find worsted there. It really, they started as Simply Socks Yarn Company. Um, so you can get opal through them. You can get, used to be able to get Mad Tosh and Shibui and all sorts of things, but um they have a ton, but they also have their store brand. Hopefully the store brand will now be available. I know this hasn't been available for the public. It's been limited to their socks. Sign up for their newsletter or RSS their blog because they announce their sock um, clubs and they usually sell out super duper fast. I've never been disappointed with their sock clubs ever, ever, ever. Um, again, price point wise, you can't go wrong. They make a great gift, um, whatever. Uh, additionally, my other yarn club that I'm currently in is the Apple Yarns, um, Apple Fiber Studio um, Club, monthly club. It ships to me once a month. That's why it's called a monthly club. Um, and you can pause it at any time or whatever, but this month's color, oof. Um, this is called Shaved Ice, and um, Andrea says that it reminded her of the shaved ice uh, they got at the Bellingham Farmer's Market in the summer in Washington. Um, and just look at that. Um, it's got mostly purpley blue with some greens and pinks. Um, previously, I made a skein of this into a ripple camisole that I made too small because I'm fatter than I thought I was. Um, and this may become another ripple camisole in the right size. Um, so their yarn is absolutely wonderful. This is a uh, 7525, does not feel like it. So soft. Um, this is definitely next to skin soft. And like I said, I am fairly sensitive. And then you get every month uh, with the so sock subscription, you get a little treat. And this month it was needle stoppers shaped like apples. So um, that's the yarn that has come into my house. Um, 
trying, like I said, to be mindful and not do too much. Um, not buy too much that I don't need. Um, my other goal of this week is to hang up some more shelves and clean up this yarn. Um, and if I have to go get some more mothballs and mothball it up, I will, because I'm very mad about that moth. Um, let's see. Um, also, I'd like to say that moths have nothing to do about your cleanliness. Once they're in your house, they're almost impossible to get rid of. We moved and I thought I killed all of them before we left, but apparently maybe not. Um, and I also don't know that that was a clothing moth. It was a little bug. Um, I smushed it, so I don't know. Its remains are right in front of me. Um, so now I'm going to talk about life and stuff. It's going to be really quick. We're already at 30 minutes and I have got some work to do. So um, yays, nays, all those sorts of things. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you know we lost one of our dogs a couple of weeks ago. Um, Penny was only with us for a year. I adopted her from my dad's best friend who was no longer able to take care of her because he is 90 with mobility issues. And so we took her in and Larry never really liked her, I thought, my big dog. He loved her though. He has been so sad since she passed away. Um, and we took care of her and we loved her and we, we, I was her mean physical therapist, occupational therapist. I made her walk and made her go up and down stairs when she didn't want to when she was getting older and we put her on CBD and she was great for a few months. And then I felt something in her stomach and we took her to the vet and she had a giant mass in her stomach, um, in her core, they don't know where, I think it was her stomach. Um, and she heard that, I think like Penny heard the vet and I talking about options. Um, which we decided on the live and let live and let her live her best life because she was already 12. Um, and I think at that point, Penny was like, yeah, I got cancer, I'm done. And so she faded pretty quickly. Um, and we're still sad around here. It is a dog and not a human, I know. They're like our kids, to my husband and me. In the interim, I have had a friend lose her brother. I have had several I think three friends lose their dads in the last couple of weeks and so it's been hard around here I've been sort of melancholy and sad but um my I've got my other two dogs and they are super affectionate um Rookie who is my aloof 15 year old who doesn't act 15 she has been super affectionate to me and that's not her thing um she is very aloof and gives you love when she wants to give you love but she has been super affectionate and she slept next to me last night on the floor not on the bed like she used to but she's coming around um and Larry is sleeping right here next to me and he has not gotten into anything yet at all like he has not been sniffing yarn or doing anything which is an exception um on a happier note um our family is pretty happy and healthy and that's I've had lots of friends who've had COVID I have another friend who's child not only was diagnosed with leukemia but then got all of the respiratory illnesses and had pneumonia and so they spent from right after Thanksgiving through the holidays in the hospital um and he is home now so that's wonderful and they were like oh your son's gonna be super tired and he might not even want to walk he's about three years old two and a half might not even want to walk. He's just going to be lethargic. The kid is all over the place and that's so wonderful to see and it's just so nice to see and I am going to say hooray for modern medicine because um, he is just, he's a miracle, but he's a miracle because of all the scientists and the doctors and all that stuff. Um, otherwise, let's see, the man, my spouse, is taking a trip in a couple of weeks. He is going to a convention and I'm not complaining because I'm going to get three days where I can work, work, work. Don't have to worry about making dinner. I can eat cereal for dinner. And then I can knit, knit, knit all night um, with no interruptions. Um, and then after that, my mom is leaving town for a couple days. So I'm going to spend some time with her before she leaves. She never travels and she's going to visit my sister. So that's really nice. And then my parents, my dad and my stepmother, are going to Florida for a month. Um, right after my mom gets back from Florida, my parents are going down there because my sister's trying to convince them to move there. Um, my dad does not want to go. I'm not sure if my stepmom wants to go. If my stepmom wants to go, my dad will go. Um, but my dad doesn't want to go. Not because of my sister. He just doesn't want to live in Florida. Um, when you live in Colorado, you don't really ever want to leave Colorado. Um, let's see, reading and watching. I am late on the Stranger Things 
bandwagon, but we are hooked on that show. I'm in the middle of season two. Um, my friend Cindy was like, yeah, it gets weird either in season two or season three. I'm like, it gets weird. Been weird from the beginning, but I love it. Um, I did not think my husband would get into it and he totally, totally loves it. So um, we're not into horror. I like psychological thrillers. I don't like horror. Um, so I wasn't sure if we were going to like it. Yes, it's got, it's not really horror horror though. Um, but if you have suggestions along that line, I have almost every streaming service. So, um, I want to watch, um, any suggestions you have put below. Um, and I want to watch the 1619 Project. Um, I know my husband will not be interested in that, but I want to watch that coming out on Hulu. Meanwhile, I continue to watch um, New Girl for my brain dead comedy, and I love it because um, it's just cute. Um, so, and the other thing I want to want to note on that is how come all these international actors and actresses can throw on American accents like it's not a problem? And then like, if you're American and you try to do a British accent or something, you're horrible. Like half of the Stranger Things cast is not American, at least. Um, the kids, they're like, they're not American. They all are from like Europe and the continent and the UK. And yet they have great American accents. They never slip up. And then you see like Robin Hood with Kevin Costner where he can't keep an accent or whatever. Um, so, um, that's all we're watching. I'm not reading a whole lot. I'm reading A Man Called Ove, um, because I want to see the movie A Man Called Otto. Um, and that's really about it. My life is really boring right now, and I kind of like it. So, um, I don't really have any rants. I guess my one rant would be my neighbors. My neighbor the other day, they parked, garbage day was Friday, they parked. Now, this is me being irrationally upset over something. I know it. Although my friend said I was not irrationally upset. They park and I put my garbage cans. I left like three to five feet behind their car for their garbage cans so they could back up and get out of their parking spot in front of my house on the street. They got out of the parking spot, turned around, got out of their car, threw my garage, my garbage can and recycling can into the middle of my driveway, like angrily. And I'm gonna assume they were having a bad day. Um, I didn't make it outside in time to confront them on it. Um, but I'm really, that was just rude. Like there was no need for that. Like even if he had put them in front of my driveway, it would have been fine, but he like threw them. So um, we'll see what happens on this trash day. And, um, I will continue if he if he continues to throw them I will be passive aggressive and put them right up against his car I gave him like five feet um which is more than enough to get out if you know how to parallel park if you don't know how to parallel park that's your fault not mine so be nice to your neighbors don't do rude things like that um you know be nice that's I'm not asking too much shovel your walk on that note Spread kindness like confetti because that shit gets on everything and you will never be able to vacuum it up. Drink the bourbon. Knit the yarn. If you buy it, knit it. Enjoy it. Don't save it for a special occasion because what is that special occasion? Make something you can wear and then, then you have more than one special occasion. Um, everybody be good to one another. Knit what makes you happy. Um, and I will talk to you later. I'm sorry for babbling so much today. Hopefully I find some words in the next couple weeks and I will hopefully be back with lots of finished February finished items. Take care.